Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be learning how to calculate reaction forces applied to a structure at the supports. Later on in the video we will be working through these three example problems and I will leave the timestamp to each of these in the description below. In the previous video we introduced the different types of loads we will come across in structural analysis including concentrated, uniformly distributed, linearly distributed and parabolic distributed loads. We also introduced the different types of fundamental supports, including fixed supports, which transmit forces and moments in any direction, pin or hinge supports, which transmit forces in any direction, and roller supports, which transmit forces perpendicular to the support. Before we can analyse the reaction forces the supports apply to a structure, we must define all forces and moments that are applied to the structure. This includes the list of loads we mentioned previously, including the weight of the structure itself, the occupants, furniture, snow, etc. In addition to the reaction forces the supports apply to the structure to prevent it from moving freely. This diagram visualises the forces and moments just stated, being applied to a two-storey structure. As the reaction forces are preventing the structure from moving freely, we know that the structure is in equilibrium and therefore we can calculate the reaction forces as we know that the sum of all forces is equal to zero and the sum of all moments with respect to a point is equal to zero. To simplify this, for a plane structure, we can break this down such that we know the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to zero, and the sum of all moments with respect to a point is equal to zero. Let's take a look at a simple example then. We have a beam that is supported by a hinge support at point A and a roller support at point B. The weight of the beam is negligible, however it is supporting a weight of 10 kN in the centre, hence the concentrated force of 10 kN in the diagram. The hinge support transmits forces in any direction, and therefore we can decompose the reaction force into a horizontal reaction and vertical reaction force, denoted RxA and R, Y, A, respectively. As the roller support only transmits forces perpendicular to the support, we only have a vertical reaction force, denoted R, Y, B. Note that it doesn't matter which direction we draw our reaction forces along the line of action, as we do not know the sense of the forces. Here, we have drawn the vertical reaction forces in the upwards direction. If we calculate our reaction forces to be positive, this means the reaction forces will be acting in the upwards direction, whereas if we calculate them to be negative, the vertical reaction forces will be in the downwards direction. This concept also applies to the horizontal reaction force. To calculate the reaction forces, we must consider the previous stated assumptions, that for the structure to be in equilibrium, we know the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to zero, and the sum of all moments with respect to a point is equal to zero. Considering the horizontal forces applied to our structure, we only have Rxa, and so the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to Rxa, which equals zero. Considering the vertical forces applied to our structure, we have the weight of 10 kN, which is being applied downwards on the beam, and therefore comparing this to our coordinate system, we will take it to be negative in the calculations, and we also have two reaction forces, R, Y, A and R, Y, B, which are being applied upwards, and therefore, comparing these to our coordinate system, we will take them to be positive in the calculations. Therefore, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to R, Y, A plus R, Y, B minus 10, and we know that this is equal to zero. Finally, we must consider the moments applied to the beam. For this, we will consider the moments applied to point A. Previously, we learnt that the moment is equal to the magnitude of a load multiplied by the perpendicular distance from that load to the point. As the line of action of Rxa and RyA goes through point A, the distance from the forces to point A is zero, and so neither of these reaction forces apply moments to point A. On the other hand, the weight of 10 kN does apply a moment to point A. We have been told that the weight is applied to the centre of the beam and since we haven't been provided with a length for the beam, we will just assign our own values, ensuring the ratios are correct. So, doing this, 
we will say the 10 kN weight is being applied to the beam 1 meter away from point A, and the reaction force RYB is being applied to the beam 2 meters away from point A. Using this, we can calculate that the sum of all moments applied to point A is equal to RYB times 2 minus 10 times 1, which equals 0. Note that the 10 kN weight is applying a clockwise rotation and therefore a negative moment, and RYB is applying an anticlockwise rotation, and therefore a positive moment. Already from these set of equations, we can see that RXA is equal to zero. We will now move on to the equation for the sum of moments, as we only have one unknown, and rearranging for RYB, we get RYB equals 10 times one divided by two, and therefore RYB is equal to five kilonewtons. Then, we can substitute this into our equation for the sum of vertical forces, giving us RYA plus 5 minus 10, which equals 0. Therefore, rearranging for RYA, we get RYA is equal to 10 minus 5, which equals 5 kilonewtons. So, we can conclude by saying that there are no horizontal reaction forces being applied to this structure, and both of the reaction forces at point A and point B have a magnitude of 5 kilonewtons and are being applied to the points in the upwards direction. Moving on to the next example, we have another structure being supported by a hinge support at point A and a roller support at point B. For this example though, we have a uniform load of 5 kilonewtons per metre being applied to the entire 12 metre long structure. As we saw in the first example, the supports result in the following reaction forces being applied to the structure. When calculating reaction forces with distributed loads, we can consider the distributed loads as concentrated loads, where the magnitude is equal to the total load applied to the area of the distributed load and it's applied at the centroid. For us, as our structure is two-dimensional, we can easily see that the centroid of our distributed load is at the centre of the structure, 6 metres away from point A and 6 metres from point B. Using this knowledge, we can calculate that the distributed load is equivalent to a concentrated load applied at the centre of the structure with a magnitude equal to 5 kN per metre times 12 metres, which equals 60 kN. Now, to calculate the reaction forces, we will once again consider the previously stated assumptions, that for the structure to be in equilibrium, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to zero, and the sum of all moments with respect to a point is equal to zero. Considering the horizontal forces applied to our structure, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to Rxa, which equals zero. Considering the vertical forces applied to our structure, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to Rya plus Ryb minus 60, and we know that this is equal to zero. And then, considering the moments applied to point A, we have RYB times 12 minus 60 times 6, which equals 0. Again, we can see that RXA is equal to 0. And moving on to the equation for the sum of moments at point A, rearranging for RYB, we get RYB equals 60 times 6 divided by 12, and therefore RYB is equal to 30 kilonewtons. Then we can substitute this into our equation for the sum of the vertical forces, giving us RYA plus 30 minus 60, which equals zero. And therefore, rearranging for RYA, we get RYA is equal to 60 minus 30, which equals 30 kilonewtons. So we can conclude by saying that there are no horizontal reaction forces being applied to the structure, and both of the reaction forces at point A and point B have a magnitude of 30 kilonewtons and are being applied to the points in the upwards direction. For the final example, we have this structure that is only supported by a fixed support at point A. The structure has a length of 5 metres and the self-weight of the structure is negligible. This time, instead of being given a force being applied to the structure, we have a moment of 2 kilonewton metres being applied in an anti-clockwise direction at the end of the structure. As the fixed support transmits forces and moments in any direction, at point A we will have a reaction force which can be decomposed into a horizontal and vertical reaction force, 
and we have a reaction moment as we have just seen denoted in the diagram. Again, with all the forces now defined, to calculate the reactions, we will consider that for the structure to be in equilibrium, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to zero, and the sum of all moments with respect to a point is equal to zero. So, considering the horizontal forces applied to our structure, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to Rxa, which equals zero. Considering the vertical forces applied to our structure, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to RyA, which equals zero. And then considering the moments applied to point A, we have two minus Rma, which equals zero. For this simple example, we can see from the final equation that Rma is equal to two kilonewton meters, and therefore, we can conclude that there are no reaction forces applied to this structure, but there is a reaction moment of negative two kilonewton meters applied to the structure at point A. And referring to our positive coordinate directions, we know that this reaction moment is applying a clockwise rotation. So, now we have worked through a few simple examples for calculating support reactions, and we have seen how we can apply the theory we learnt at the start. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.